Well, you may have knocked the gun out of my hand, hero, but you couldn't stop me from hitting you anyway. Sorry I got a mite sloppy when I pierced your ear. <laughs> Looks like you'll bleed to death in a few seconds. Guess now I can tell Penelope that you won't be interfering with her plans anymore. Penelope? What did he say? Your head's swimming, but you're sure he said Penelope. Could it be her? Could she be the cause of all this? Yeah, we, we only have a few seconds to save Freddy's life. Score! You weakly pull the neckerchief from around your neck. Score! You place your lucky neckerchief on your ear and press on it to staunch the flow of blood. With your last remaining ounce of strength, you pull yourself up and stumble off towards the schoolhouse to see Penelope. Penelope, Penelope the sweet, Penelope my beloved, Penelope the traitor. Freddy dragged his bleeding self over to the schoolhouse. The anger and hurt was just ripping at his gut like a swarm of bot flies on roadkill. Only worse, cause Freddy, unlike roadkill, was still alive. The schoolhouse door was unlocked for once, and Freddy walked right on in. When Freddy stepped inside, Penelope was standing at the desk, packing in a hurry. She didn't even notice him come in. Gazing at her like that, Freddy saw her for the conniving snake in the grass she really was. All the bitter hurt and betrayal and rage was too much for Freddy to hold down. It churned around inside of him and finally welled up, bubbling to the surface in a furious storm of outrage. Hey, Penelope, what gives? Oh, why, it's you, the silver handsome-eared stranger. Handsome silver-eared stranger, you mean? Oh, right. I, um, I thought Kenny had taken care of you. Ha 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 Are you kidding? He did just the opposite. He hurt me. Just look at my ear. Why, you poor man. You poor, brave cowboy. You're wounded. Here, allow me to tear a strip off my undergarment. Penelope slowly moved her hands up to her bodice and began to carefully unbutton it, one button at a time, staring straight into Freddy's eyes. You know, ever since I saw you capture that big bad gambler at the saloon, I've been thinking about you, thinking about how I wanted you. She slowly slipped her hands under the fabric. Could this be my Penelope? Is it hot in here? Or is it just me? And what's with all this echo? Thinking about how I needed you. And before Freddy knew it, Penelope yanked a derringer from her bosom and aimed it at him. Dead, that is. Drop him, gunslinger! Now! We need to be very quick here. You resignedly unbuckle your holsters, letting your gun slip to the floor. Penelope appears to relax a little, but her finger is still on the trigger of the Derringer. Looks like she might shoot at any moment. And here. Score! You grab the slate and whip it around just in the nick of time. As you bend down to pick up your gun belt, Penelope hurls the Derringer straight at your head. Before I kill you, Mr. Gunslingin' Stranger Hero Type, let's just find out who you really are behind that silver ear. Freddy!
Hey, you? Yes, it's me. No, yes, it is I. Boy, you can take the wicked villainous hoodwinking double crossing lying slut out of the school teacher, but you can't take the school teacher out of the wicked villainous hoodwinking double crossing lying slut. Why, Penelope? Why? Why on earth have you done all this? Oh, I may as well tell you, you little runt. You know too much for me to let you live. Oh, all right, here goes. I had just finished my education back in western Pennsylvania at the local Meadville Normal School when I saw a small ad on the school bulletin board seeking teachers for a, quote, lovely little village way out west nestled high in the Sierra Nevada mountains. I wrote a letter of inquiry and was offered the position by the Course Gold Board of Education. They even sent me stagecoach fare. Soon after my arrival, which you saw in the prologue, I believe. Am I boring you? Oh, good. I noticed the oily swamp behind the schoolhouse. Being a good Pennsylvania oil country girl, I grasped immediately that Course Gold was literally oozing money. But <laughs> I could never afford to buy mineral rights on the meager pittance they pay a single unwed female teacher, so I made a little arrangement with Mr. Balance. He foreclosed whichever mortgages he could, and convinced Sheriff Shift to shut down everyone else. Balance would get the land and buildings for a song and give me the mineral rights I wanted, as long as I gave him what he wanted. But Penelope, you seem to be such a sweet, innocent young woman. How could you be such a sleazebag? Well, it had to be me, Freddy, don't you see? It's always the person you least suspect. Well, I didn't suspect Srini. Couldn't it have been him? Well, it's a little late for that now. Wait, wait! I really didn't suspect me! Well, if it's you, then I'm doing the town a favor by disposing of you, aren't I? <laughs> Kill me. Penelope eyes the lantern sitting on the newel post. Oops, how clumsy of me. Oh well, of course Gold won't be needing a schoolhouse anyway. Wait, there were a lot of other people I didn't suspect. All right, drop it, Freddy. We don't have much time to react. It's your silver ear. Your cover's blown now. You can't reach it from the chair, Freddy. All right, let's get out of the chair. You scooch the chair closer and closer to your precious silver ear and just manage to snag it. Score! Ah, scratching right there sure feels good, eh, Freddy? Well, we can't remove the rope ourselves, and all we have on us are keys for some reason. I understand why our inventory is cleared out, but why keep these here? This is an opportunity to save. There's only one thing that we can really do right now and that is use this ear and we need to use it on the ground smart thinking you frantically give the silver ear a few quick rubs on the stone floor in a trice the silver ear gets a sharp edge ragged and rough but sharp enough to be dangerous Score! and this involves a bit of pixel hunting as you can easily miss the ropes you manage to slice into the ropes with the sharpened silver ear. Score! Justice will be done, madam. Damn, I knew I shouldn't have wasted my time packing those student folders. I shall allow you to choose the manner of your demise. Say what? Oopsie. Sorry, you took too long to decide. Penelope grabs one of the swords off the Civil War display above the blackboard. 
Let's do the same thing. Score! Oh dear, I wonder, did I forget to mention downstairs that Meadville Normal had the nation's first female fencing team? On guard. Again, I'm not here for the challenge. Wait a second. Why do I have the... Okay, right, all right. That's because I thought I was going to lose and I would have wasted 37 minutes of recording. Now I believe we just need to click on her when she moves her swords. Well that's the strategy that I used before and it seemed to work. There we go. Oh, I can breathe a sigh of relief now. Now, if there is an actual strategy to this, then please let me know. As all I seem to do is click when she moves. Or maybe I need to Go down when she goes down and up when she goes up. Oh, there we go. Curses, you foiled me! It's not a foil, it's a saber. A foil is straight and has two sharp edges. Unless it's the smaller French foil, which is dull and is used chiefly for thrusting. A saber, like this one, is curved and has one sharp edge. As a teacher and a member of the fencing team, <laughs> you of all people should have known that! Oh no. Foiled, defeated, and corrected. Now I really feel bad. And thank God for my high school intramural sports program. Otherwise, I'd be Fettuccine Alfredi by now. Score! Hey, it's you! I recognize you now from the old neighborhood. Freddy something. Good to see you again, Kenny. I hope I didn't hurt your hand out there in the street. Right, there's only one thing left to do. This is the last action of the game. I hope that you enjoy the ending, and thank you for watching. Whoops. No, not my hair, Kenny, but this. Yeah. Hurling your sharpened ear like a Chinese throwing star, you whip it at Kenny, catching him right in the throat. Score! Yes, sir, by gum, by cracky, with his one good ear all mangled and grody, Freddy managed to leap from the schoolhouse just seconds before it went up in the biggest conflagration course gold had ever seen. The truth came out about Penelope and how she'd been plotting to buy up all the oil rights. There was no earthly way she could have survived the blast. Still, it were curious how they never recovered her body. Sheriff Shift and P.H. Balance were run out of town on a rail. 
The townsfolks leased the oil rights to some big developers. Soon everybody was rolling in dough, sprucing up the town and revitalizing coarse gold. Me? I eventually found my whittling knife, all gunked up. I don't remember dropping it. I must have had a spell of stupidity or something. And as for Freddy, well, he made himself another couple of silver prosthesii, one to replace the ear that Kenny just shot off, and one to replace the silver ear that ended up fatally lodged in Kenny's neck. What with all the fuss, Freddy was able to keep his gunslinging identity a secret. And it were a good thing, too, cause Freddy's adventures was far from over. But that little nipper is another story. Now get off my lap. You're starting to compact my vitals. Now the whole town still remembers how the old school house was blown to embers, though Miss Prim's body was never, ever found. Since the sheriff and the banker made the folks of course go red with anger, they tarred and feathered and ran them out of town. And Serene, he became an ordinary wreck, salty be shaman down on the Pecos where engine hearts still burn. While the townsfolk safe from danger talk about that silver earlobe stranger, where did he come from? And when will he return? Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Black gold fields were his legacy. Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Peerless, earless, and free. Why, Penelope? Why? Why on earth have you done all this? I suppose I can tell you. You know too much already, so I can never let you live. I had just finished my education back in western Pennsylvania at the local Meadville. Oh, wait a second, Josh, can I ask you a question? Cut! <sighs> Shelly, how many times do we have to do this damn scene? It's just that... <sighs> I don't understand my motivation for this speech. Oh, jeez. 
I mean, why would Penelope reveal all this to Freddy? Why doesn't she just kill him and get on with it for crying out loud? Just do it, all right? I want to get home tonight. Look, I've got people coming in from the coast. This is about acting, Gil. You wouldn't know anything about that. Shell, it's just a plot device so that the audience understands what's going on. Otherwise, we leave a, a lot of unanswered questions. Oh, can't we just put it in the manual instead, Joshy, sweetie, booby, honey? It's just so, so... dull. No, they might read it before they finish the game. Ready to take it again? All right, fine, I suppose. And... action! Oh. oh, God. You hit me again. No, 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 no. You really hit me. Cut! Yes, I'm cut, and I'm bleeding, too. I hope it's serious, you little wimp. Excuse me, can I say something here? I am gonna sue. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Where are you bleeding? My finger. He'll never pick his ear with that finger again. <laughs> oh, you just shut up, Miss Thing. This is all your fault, you know. Can you suffer through one more take, Gil? <laughs> oh, sure, Joshua. And I'll just bleed to death. But you'll have your game. That's what you want, isn't it? That's what you really want. That's all this is about. You, you, you. <sighs> all right. Come on, let's do it. What are we waiting for? Come on, people, let's go. <sighs> All right, come on, let's do it. What are we waiting for? Come on, come on, come on, people, let's go. We're losing the light. Gil, use the pain. Direct it at Shelly. All right. Oh, my formal fellow, I am but a weary traveler from a land far, far away. Cut! What was wrong with that? Uh, the accent slipped, babe. Good. <sighs> I didn't hear any Italian creeping in. I thought it was pretty good. You don't like my accent? You call my agent. I can't work under these conditions. I'm going to my trailer. Antonio, don't walk on the ants! Uh. Ants? Ha! <clears throat> That's what I think of your lousy ants. Mike, get Antonio's agent on the phone. Steve, get the rest of the programmers down here. Gil, take five. Double, stunt double. Hey, I said stunt double. I'm not gonna do this jump myself. I could break my neck. I'm going to my trailer. Gil, just do it. Oh, yeah, right. Like that's in my contract. My stunt double is supposed to handle this. She can't, she quit yesterday. Oh, really? Why? People, people, work with me here, huh? I'm sensing reluctance. Now, please, just do the jump before we lose the assay set, all right? Oh, honey, doesn't this scene take place at night? Well, we're shooting day for night. It's cheaper. The artists will fix it in post-production. Oh, I see. Off the set, Melly! Ooh, but I wanted to watch Gil break his neck. Get out! He's nervous enough about doing this scene without you watching him. Ready, Gail? 
This is ridiculous. I swear, I will sue if something goes wrong. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Just do it. And action! Ow! Workers' comp! Workers' comp! Cut! <laughs> <laughs>